Modders for Fallout 4 pretty much as always have been busy. Recently, a lot of really cool survival focused mods have been released for the game and actually with this video I'm trying something different as I do pretty often on this channel going over some recently released mods for Fallout 4. This time really all of them with a survival focus and actually a pretty comprehensive survival overhaul. But even outside of that, looking at some of the older mods that would fit in really well or just had updates as of later, even some I just never ended up covering. And in the end, if you download all of these, you'll have a pretty cool survival experience in game. If you guys enjoy this type of content or just want to see more in the way of Fallout 4, you can leave a like or subscribe. But with all that being said, let's first take a look at the cornerstone mod for this video, that with advanced needs too. What this is going to be is a customizable survival overhaul for Fallout 4, doing a lot of things. Survival mode, in my eyes, is really one of the only ways to get a true and raw experience from Fallout 4, and if you've never tried the mode, I highly recommend doing so. So I would say one half of the advanced needs mod isn't actually changing much about survival mode, but rather giving you full customizability when it comes to its features. Do you want to be able to fast travel, quick save, or something else? You could do that. There's a great menu that has easy toggle on or off switches for basically every survival mode feature. This is awesome because some things around survival mode are just frustrating, like not having saving unless you use a bed. I've never been a fan of that and I really enjoy turning it off. There have been some other mods to do this in the past, but Advanced Needs takes it to the next level, definitely has a lot more customizability, and also one of the cool parts of this is you don't actually even have to go into survival mode. It gives you many of the survival mode features while still on normal, easy, or even very hard mode if you want to go that route instead. You still can use it in survival mode, enabling certain things that are typically disabled, and even though that is cool, spending 5-10 to 10 minutes at the start of a playthrough customizing the mode to exactly how you want, there's actually quite a bit of additional aspects this adds in to improve survival mode or make it quite a bit more immersive. And again, everything I talk about in this video, all of these new features are totally toggleable. If you don't want them, you could just turn them off. Or if you only want them some of the time, you could turn them off and then turn them back on later. So some of these are minor and kind of funny. Like you can make it so after eating and drinking, you now will have a bathroom requirement. There's new objects added in that you could place down in settlement mode and you'll have to go use the bathroom. There's also an option to make it so NPCs also have have this need, so sometimes you'll find all of the NPCs at your settlement using the toilets you set up. But also, if you don't take care of this need, you will get debuffs. Your character may be injured, or even if you hold it in too long, you may get an infection. Food gets a pretty comprehensive overhaul in this one. There's an expansion for advanced needs that you could install as an optional file that'll make it so food spoilage is integrated into Fallout 4. Over time, the food you have in your inventory will slowly decay and spoil. This also can be toggled for water too, so a purified water will eventually turn into a dirty water. Hi, this is pretty cool, and if you eat some of these dirtier things, it could give you radiation Another sickness or less benefits. There's also several additional options in the way of food prep. There are some new food items you can create, some new crafting tables to create these new food items. Being hungry or thirsty will also just negatively impact your action points. This mod also features the introduction of certain disease overhauls. You can now get radiation disease, which will come with its own downsides, including an impact on your immune system. You can get immunodeficiency, basically meaning you'll have a weakened immune system. Again, you can get this from consistent exposure to radiation, over usage of certain chems, getting food poisoning, such as by eating dirty food. This will just make it so your immune system is weaker, you can get sick more often. All of those features and many more I didn't even really talk about will make it so you really want to take care of your character a bit more. You have to worry about food, preparing correctly, and it makes survival mode just a lot more interactive on the survival component. Outside of that though, there also are some combat changes. You have the typical just adjusting of vanilla stats, how much damage you deal to enemies and how much damage they deal to you, but also other cool things, like if you sleep in a random bed, such as one in the middle of nowhere, you might get abducted, your companion might get abducted, or even just get some of your items stolen. If you get abducted, there's a little quest where you have to free yourself and get some of your items back. With one of the expansions, it also overhauls it, so too much radiation exposure could lead to you becoming a ghoul, which has its own set of impacts. And honestly, there's just way too many features that are unique, new, or interesting for this mod to talk about in just a small segment. It's one of those mods that you should really just download, mess around with all of the settings, and then try to play with, and as things pop up, you'll realize how to fix them and how much of a change this carries in survival. It really is a cool one. You can apply it to existing saves, and it definitely creates an improved experience overall. But to go along with advanced needs too, there are several other mods that I think could make survival mode or the survival experience overall a bit more immersive or interesting. One newly released mod is The Famished. What this is going to do is add in new NPCs into Fallout 4, and 
these are actually pretty interesting. It's a new custom famished NPC. There's not much to them. They obviously look pretty daunting and interesting, although being a bit shorter. And the gist is you'll find them chasing radstags as they're trying to eat those radstags. They have a similar AI to radstags where sometimes they'll just run away from you, other times they'll attack you directly, but more often than not, they are running away hunting for additional radstags. But I just think they look really cool and I think they're implemented in a cool way in this hunter versus hunted aspect. There are several different variants of these that you can find, of course, tougher and legendary ones that you may stumble upon, and also they drop their own food item that you can loot and cook. But then we do have Project Reality Footsteps. So Project Reality is actually a mod for Battlefield 2. If you ever heard of the game Squad, it's very similar to that. Squad's really a spiritual successor to Project Reality, meant to be a very realistic experience. But what this mod is doing is using some of the footstep sounds from Project Reality and implementing them into Fallout 4. The end result being, now when you walk in Fallout 4, it first sounds a lot more realistic, but also sounds a lot more profound. This is implemented in a way so when you actually walk on different surfaces, the sound will change. But one of the really cool aspects of this one is actually while you're sprinting, there's sound effects for your gear bouncing around, whether it be your backpack moving, your gun hitting some items on you. It's a very simple mod, but I would say actually a pretty cool addition to the game. And then we do have the Scavers backpack. What this is going to do is add in a pretty cool looking new backpack into Fallout 4. There's two variants of this one, a leather version and a canvas version. The canvas adding slightly more carry weight, but both adding additional carry weight to your character. It's another super simple one. You'll just find it among vendors and you could buy it or craft it for yourself. And there are several different customization options for each. So you could change the visuals on them or make it so the straps appear or don't. I just think this actually looks like a very plausible backpack to see people wearing in Fallout, especially the leather one. It's a cool but simple mod and definitely a nice addition to your existing loadout. But another mod to really up the immersion factor in this game is Animated Chems Redone. What this mod's going to do is make it so now when you use a chem, it will have an animation. It's really simple. When you use jet, you'll see your character actually using that jet. These animations are typically in line with what you see from the stim pack animation and actually fit seamlessly into the game. It doesn't even feel all that modded, almost like they should have been here to begin with. Not every chem has an animation here, but most have new ones and it's another Another one that's just a nice little immersion factor. It obviously does come with a pretty big consequence. Now there is a time to use a chem. When you hit that hotkey, it won't immediately activate. You'll have to wait a few seconds to go through that animation, which can prove vital in certain scenarios. But in general, I would just say it's a cool and nice addition to the game. Next up, we do have the biohazard suit. This is actually a really cool mod and one that I think I'm going to be using for a while. As you can see, what it's going to add in is a new biohazard or hazmat-esque suit. You can craft this for your character and of course it provides a variety of protections against the elements similar to the existing hazmat suit. The main difference being this one looks a lot cooler. As you can see by some of the clips in the background, there's quite a wide variety of customization options for this. You can make it look pretty typical or a little bit more tactical. The helmet and the hazmat suit themselves are actually separate, so you could have one or the other. And one of the reasons I like this mod so much is there's a lot of outfit or armor mods for Fallout 4, but this one fills a little bit of a different role. Many players playing this game carry a hazmat suit with them just kind of in case if you need it in one special situation. Although the hazmat suit's fine, this looks a lot cooler and it's a great alternative of an item to carry your inventory and use from time to time when required and also just fits into the game pretty well. But for another versatile armor mod, we also have the West Tech Tactical Gloves. This is a simple one. It's just going to add in a few new gloves into Fallout 4, them being a modern military theme, but with Fallout 4 modding having a modern military theme overall anyway, I think they actually fit in pretty well. Gloves are one of those items that you might not think about but actually play a pretty big role. While actually playing the game in first person, most of the time you're going to see your hands. So with gloves you're wearing or not actually play a bigger role or will get more screen time than almost any other armor piece. These come in a few different colors as you saw and just all around I thought they looked pretty nice and could fit in with a lot of people's existing load orders. But with all that being said, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one as far as the mods go. But let me know in the comments down below, did you like the format? of this video. But yeah, several of the mods I just showed you I never covered but were actually released maybe six months ago or so, or even some of the other ones I just haven't talked about in a really long time or had gotten new updates and I felt like they deserve some recognition again. Do you want to see that in future iterations or would you prefer if I just stuck to new releases exclusively? I actually think that it'd 
advanced needs overhaul is going to be pretty big. On paper, maybe it doesn't sound as massive as it is, but when you're using it in game, some of those even minor changes really affect gameplay. As always, again, I thank you all for watching. I have several other mod videos coming and in the works right now, so you can look forward to that. But with that being said, I hope to see you all next time. Later.